Hey everyone, uh, thanks for joining us. We're about to get cooking at our weekly menu. We've got all the dishes coming up for you, starters, mains and desserts. Uh, make sure you've got all your packaging all opened, everything grouped in its label order and colour. Um, really, really easy, easy to follow. Hope you have a great time. Let's get cooking. So starting off as usual, we're going with our weekly bake. This week it is a black olive for gas. So that's all in there, lovely and wrapped up in your UV Chef paper. Going in the oven for about six minutes, you can go in the oven in the paper with a sticker on, no problem at all. You've got your little uh, tomato hummus here. This is local Isle of Wight tomatoes. Now a little tip on it, you can put it into a little pan of scalding water. Warm hummus is really, really nice. Just in there for a few minutes, so not long. Let's get this in the oven. There we go. Now I'm going to get my hummus out shortly, put it into a nice little bowl, back in six. So, out comes the fugas. All nice and heated up. My hummus has just come out of the water. Let's unwrap that. Look at that. Beautiful fugas. Some lovely semolina dusting on the top. Just going to put a little olive oil on the top. Gives it a lovely little shine. Touch of mold and salt. Look at that. Beautiful. Let's put that on our serving dish. And then let's just get our hummus, a pair of scissors or a knife, to cut across the top and then essentially you just want to push all of that down into your serving dish like so, get a spoon, just tamper that out and again a little olive oil on the top of there, there we go, lovely way Start the meal, a nice tear and share. Hope you enjoy it. We've got a beautiful fish cake here for this starter. Um, this is a halibut fish cake with crayfish tails in there and a nice little panko breadcrumb. That's going to go in the oven for about eight minutes or until we put a little knife in the centre, draw it nice and hot in the middle of the course. Then our garnishes when we come back, we've got some cucumber there, little cucumber ribbons with some fresh dill. We've got little shrimps, we've got a tartar sauce and we've got a lemon dressing. The lemon dressing we're gonna put on last second onto our cucumber and our shrimps, give it a little mix. Now I'm gonna show you how to put a lovely, beautiful plate together to receive our fish cake. Okay, I've got my lemon dressing here, just agitate it in a bit just to get it nice and mixed up. Let's just cut off the edge. And then we're going to put a little bit on our cucumber and also a little bit on our um, brown shrimp set. So that's going to make the dressing for the plate. There we go. Then give them a little stir, tiny bit of seasoning. Again, if you don't, don't want to add any more salt, you don't have to. Give the shrimps a little stir. Right, that's all good to go. We'll cut our end off a lovely little pipe and bag of tartar sauce, make sure you get rid of those little bits of plastic. Right, let's grab our fish cake out of the oven. There it comes, lovely and crispy. Tiny bit of mould and salt on the top just to re-season. And I'll get in there. So, fish cake on the plate. Let's arrange some core, uh, cucumber ribbons, sorry. Here you can kind of get a little bit of height, make them look really beautiful. And of course we're going to come with some of our brown shrimps, get some of those herbs on there. Deal working really lovely with that halibut and crayfish. That's all those. And some shrimps, look at that, lovely, lovely and fresh suiting the beautiful weather we've got out there at the moment. A few on top, a few more around, a little bit of a dressing. There you go. And then finally, let's get some of our tartar sauce. And let's just pipe nice little piles of that. Get a good bit on there because you've got a really nice sized fish cake there. Tiny bit on top. There we go. How about that? Lovely halibut and crayfish fish cake. Onto our meat starts now, and we've got a harissa spiced rabbit. This is buttermilk fried rabbit, lovely and crispy. Look at that, you can see it. Um, this is going to go in the oven for about eight to ten minutes, or until it's crisp up really nicely. Then I've got vichy carrot puree, uh, lovely and smooth, 
drop that into a pound of scalded water, nice and easy. Pickle carrots when we come back, nasturtion leaves, very, very easy to put together. I'm going to get a rabbit cooking now, back in about 10 minutes. Right, let's get our rabbit all plated up now. That's our crispy Carissa Spice buttermilk rabbit. Tiny bit of seasoning, not too much, very powerful, really nice and strong spices. Let's get a little bit of carrot puree, however you like on the plate, but I quite like it like that. Take some of our pieces of rabbit. Smells absolutely awesome, really lovely and warming spice. Rose Harissa, one of my favourite spices. Then we're going to take some of our pickled carrots. These are heritage carrots, you've got a nice mixture of the purple and the yellow. And then some of those ones. And then all that will be left is some nice peppery nasturtion leaves. There we go. Let's get some of the nasturtion on there. They're easy to grow, of course, in your garden. Then you get the nice nasturtion leaves as well. Awesome flavour. Like so. And then I'm just going to finally finish with a little bit of rapeseed. And that almost will bring the nice, all the flavours together as a bit of a dressing. That's it. Crispy buttermilk fried rabbit. Really delicious vegetarian starter now. We've got a beetroot gazpacho, lovely and zippy with some sherry vinegar in there. Keep that in the fridge until the last second, you want it nice and cold. Uh, first of all, you're going to get your cigarettes. So this is cigarettes of feta, just in there with some basil. That's going to go into the oven now about six minutes or until they're crispy. I've also got my grill on so I can give them a little grill if they need to crisp up for six minutes in the oven. When we come and come back, we're going to plate the gazpacho, sour cream on the top, pickled beetroots and apple. It's all going on back in six minutes. So cigarettes are all out in the oven now, they're nice and crispy. Leave them just on the side. Right, let's get our chilled gazpacho. I've just taken this out of the fridge. Cut off your top. Now I've got my chilled bowl just here. Let's pour. Look at that, lovely, smooth beetroot gazpacho. The say, is in there is tomatoes, beetroots, cucumber, sherry vinegar. Really nice. Cut off your little uh, Pickle, beetroot and apple. Just going to get that onto my board and then I'll take some of it and just take that all over your gazpacho. That's a lovely crunch. That's all in there. And then we'll take our sour cream. Again, as always, make sure those little ends of the piping bag go in the bin. And then we're just going to Drizzle that all over our gazpacho. A little bit of rapeseed oil. Love it how that little uh, dots sit nicely above the gazpacho. And then take your cigarettes, crispy and warm, like so. There we go. Carry it nice and carefully to the table so we don't fall into it. Enjoy your vegetarian starter. We've got a lovely roasted fillet of stone bass now for you. Stone bass, artichokes, like a sauce for the air, so artichokes, Jersey raw potatoes, bang on in season. Both these are going to go in the oven for about eight to ten minutes. So let's get them in now. There we go. And then I've got a chive creme fraiche for when we come back. It's going to mix in with the sauce really, really nice. Tomatoes. Take your Vier's dressing. So in here we've got some tomato water, lemon juice, rapeseed oil, and some seasoning. Mix some of that in there. Keep the rest for later, and then we'll just give it a little shake. That's all ready to go. Back in about eight minutes to plate up our stone bass. So my stone bass is all out of the oven now. Stone bass there, we've got our baby artichokes. That's our new potatoes in their Jersey Royals. So what we're gonna do is take some of the potatoes and artichokes and just arrange them almost kind of like central. We want to be able to see some of them when we put the fish on top. So just gonna arrange them like so. There we go. And take some of our tomatoes. Remember that's got that lovely tomato water dressing on the outside, making our sauce vierge. So 
spend a bit of time, get those colours looking fantastic. And then some of the dressing. Don't take it too wide, otherwise it will kind of mess up the plate. There we go. Quick clean up of that plate before we put the fish on. And then let's take our bass. Sit that just on the top. A little bit more of our dressing just to shine it all up. And then lastly, we'll just take a pot spoon. Take a nice little spoon of your creme fraiche. Try creme fraiche and look at that, just seat that right on the edge. And there we go, straight to the table with this one. Lovely piece of fish with our sauce for the edge. Onto our meat main course now. We've got a lovely piece of rolled pork belly here for you. Look at that, going through the layers, we've got soft herbs and preserved lemon. All you need to do on this one, Cut it out of the little vacuum pack. Remember when you come to serve it, you see that we've got a little string just around the pork belly, which is going to keep it all together. Of course, that needs to come off before you serve it. Get this in the oven about 14 to 16 minutes. In that goes. And then coming back, I'm going to show you what garnishes I've got. Black pudding uh, croquettes, just there. Uh, they're going to go in the oven for about six to eight minutes, not too long. We don't want them bursting. Um, really, really important, but just, just hot in the middle is fine. And then here we've got haricot blanc. This is like a little ragu. Haricot blanc, pancetta, some fennel, and the sauce is made of pork stock, cream, and some white wine. This is going to get emptied into a pan. So just take a spoon, pour that in. You've got your sauce all set in the bottom. So make sure all of that comes out. And then I'm just going to put a little lid on it. You don't have to, but I'm going to put a little lid just on the edge of the stove. And we'll get that heating up slowly. So I'm going to put a lid on that now. These are going in shortly, and then we'll be back to plate up the pork. Right, let's get our pork belly plated up now. So, there's my ragu. That's ragu of fennel. You've got some lovely pancetta, the haricot blanc in there. Let's get a good spoon of that onto a plate, and then some of it around the edge as well with a little of the spoon, with a lot of the uh, sauce, sorry. So, very, really, very really nice. You want a good bit of sauce. Like so, let's take our pork, sit that nicely on top to make sure it sits nice and flat. That's got our preserved lemon, it's got our lovely soft herbs going through and then we're going to put our black pudding croquettes all the way around, warm. Tiny bit of rapes in oil. There we go. I'm not going to put any salt on the top of there to brine the pork belly. You can if you like, have a taste first of all. But there it is, our rolled pork belly with preserved lemon, soft herbs. Really summery vegetarian main course now. We've got courgette flowers. So we've got three lovely courgette flowers. These are filled with couscous, which is flavoured with gremolata, which is chopped parsley, lemon zest, garlic, really, really lovely. Now you can steam these, completely up to you, or you can put them into a pan of water, which I'm going to do. So I've got my pan of scalding water here, let's just put those in. You can put a cover on there, that will be in there for about 10 minutes, 9 to 10 minutes, just to warm up. Shortly I'm going to put my polenta there, this is a parmesan polenta, I'm going to put the whole sachet into the water as well. And then when it's ready I'm going to squeeze that into a pan, get a whisk whisk it back together, that's going to go onto our plate first, then the courgette flowers, and then we've got some shea manchego to go on the top, and a lovely little salsa of romero peppers to finish it off. Back in about 10 minutes to show you this. So I'm just uh, taking my courgette flowers out of the cling film now. You see I'm just using a pair of scissors, just nice and carefully cut up the side, very, very simple, and then just carefully lift them out onto your board, like so, there we go. A little bit of rapeseed oil on the top of each one gives a lovely shine and of course a tiny bit of seasoning on each one. Right, let's grab our plate. So I'll just put it into a pan, squeeze it into a pan, and get a tiny bit of water if necessary just to thin it back down and make it nice and smooth. Then what we'll do is literally pour a good amount of that into the centre of your plate and I'm just going to Kind of tamp it down, like so, so that's all on there. 
And then we're going to get a fish slice. And we're going to get our courgette flour. And I'm just going to carefully, quite delicate, put them on the top. So let's make that nice and clean again. And then we've got our Romero pepper salsa. A little bit on the top. Lovely garlic shallots going through there. You see instantly that comes together. Look how summery that's looking. Absolutely delicious. It's a good bit of the salsa. On top, around. There we go. And then finally, our manchego. To just finish off, how beautiful does that look? There we go. Lovely vegetarian dish of stuffed courgette flowers. Onto one of our Yubi Chef favourite desserts now, we've got rum barba. So you've got your barba there, lovely little dough. And this is going to go in the oven for about four minutes. That just warms it up and crisps up the outside slightly. Then our garnishes, we've got some lovely strawberries, bang on seasonal. We've got some crispy mint just in there. And then this is what really important, the really important part of the bar bar, we've got our syrup. Now this is a syrup with rum in there which we're going to baste the uh, bar bar in so it will double in size. This is a strawberry daiquiri flavoured syrup. So we've got lime in there, we've got strawberries and of course we've got our white rum. That's just going to go on the heat and start bringing that to the simmer. My apricot glaze I'm going to put in my little pan, just bring to the boil, just ready to glaze the bar bar. When my bar bar comes out of the oven, I'm going to drop it into the syrup and then I'm going to baste it with a spoon keep on basting it and then the, the sponge will absorb all of the syrup and it will double and we're going to drain it off. So we'll come back about four or so minutes and I'll show you uh, basting the bar bar and finishing it off. So I've just been basting my rum bar bar now for a few minutes and as you can see it's doubled in size, keep on basting and then what you want to do is very very carefully get it out and put it just onto some absorbent paper. So what you don't want to be doing is serving the rum bar, which is full of liquid, of course. Then we take our little glaze. So this is just an apricot jam, which we're just going to use a pastry brush. Completely up to you. So we're just going to let that drain for a few seconds. And whilst we do that, let's take our strawberries. Again, put them on hold, completely up to you. I like to just cut them down. We're going to arrange them just around our bowl. And then we're going to sit our rum bar bar in the centre. So a few more there, just get one more. Needs one for me to eat. So that's all ready for the bar bar. Then lift your bar bar in. And just rock it back onto the spoon. There we go. You want to serve it nice and warm. Take a knife and just not all the way through, just so you can open it up like that. And then get your diplomat cream, cut the end off. And then this is, you need to go to the table quite quickly after this. But we're going to Pipe like that. Look at this, lovely. Finish it off. That crispy mint. And all ready to go. So that's my rum bar bar with strawberries and a strawberry daiquiri syrup. Lovely, rich, dark chocolate tart now. Look at that. You've got the chocolate ganache just in the centre. Uh, Flavoured with chilli, a little spike. Get that in the oven for about two minutes, no longer. It's just going to soften up the, the tart. It makes it really eat really, really well. Then we've got our natural yoghurt parfait. So just unwrap that nice and careful. And then I'm going to get a palette knife. Just get it onto your palette knife. Like so. Put that right on our plate. And then your garnishes. We've got here some beautiful lime confit. 
and lime segments. Lovely flavour with that chilli. So just carefully get them out and arrange them on the top like so. It's a really, really like simple garnish here. You don't need much. You want the chocolate to be the star of the show. So a little bit more lime. Keeping an eye on the time with my chocolate tart, of course. So that's all arranged. Got a tiniest little bit of syrup as well, just to get on the top of there, flavoured with the lime. There we go, right. Pan it ready. Let's get our tart out. Can you see there? See how that's all started to go lovely and soft on the top. Pan knife underneath. Sit that on the side, and that is it. Straight to the table. Beautiful chocolate tart, crispy pastry with that yogurt parfait. So that's the wrap for another week at UB Chef, which is our last week for a little while whilst we take a break with premises. Um, all the dishes are done here. Hope you've enjoyed your meal. Hope you've enjoyed cooking out with me. Uh, remember, if you want to order the menu again, next week is our last week. Order by this Sunday uh, for any of these dishes to arrive with you next Friday or Saturday. Have a great week. See you very soon.